Hi, my name is Olivia Hamilton. I teach at the RMIT School of Architecture and Urban Design in Interior Design, the Bachelor and Honours degree. I coordinate first year. This talk is called Commoning Interior Design and it focuses on the first year experience. The first year of university is a period of significant transition. The early social and academic experience of the student influences their likelihood to stay and succeed in university. It is now widely recognised that connection and situatedness within the university is important for fostering improved student experience and learning outcomes. This paper discusses the first two weeks of activities in interior design in the honours degree at RMIT to propose how collaborative curricular activities held early in the studies and also off campus can supply high levels of engagement and meaning and initiate ongoing connectedness. In the current pandemic and with requirements to teach online and without extended periods of organised and casual contact on campus for the students, identifying strategies for building a connected peer group outside of the traditional context of the classroom and also the lecture theatre, it's essential to find us ways to establish a committed and inclusive learning community. Interior design at RMIT has a really large first year undergraduate group averaging about 130 students. There's a significant percentage of domestic students who meet the equity and diversity criteria and also 30% international students. From their first day of university, commencing interior design students encounter and engage with RMIT's key values through industry engaged project based learning through doing in a collective learning environment focused on social, cultural and environmental awareness. The events and projects described here have been iteratively developed over the last three years, 2018, 2019 and 2020. A little bit of background and context about commoning pedagogy. Commoning pedagogy is a term that I have coined to describe how commoning processes and commoning creative practice values can inform design studio learning and teaching. Commoning is the verb of commons and it's a term that was only widely brought into use in 2008 by Peter Leinbau, who was searching for a way to describe the psychological and social activities and processes that people go through to maintain something in common. The values that underpin commoning locate self-interest within wider interests, privileges the well-being and ecology of the community, encourages caretaking characteristics, as well as integrating areas of life that are usually kept distinct. Commoning seeks to be inclusive, networked and open to emergence and variance. In commoning, it is mutuality that transforms labour into something that is more profound. This is because commoning is an effective labour, work that produces a shift or response that occurs equally in the body and the mind of those involved and creates transformations across individuals and communities. It is for this reason it is particularly useful in the university context. The affectivity of the labour allows for the information and the formation of a sense of self that is integrated within a wider system of relations extending from the past and into the future. The individual and the group develop in relation to each other with a shared disposition towards mutual caretaking and negotiation. Commoning values within a pedagogical approach structure a transition to tertiary learning environment that emphasises in the student group the production of community and care, care for each other, their creative work and the, the world that they will contribute to as designing designers. Using commoning process and values in design teaching encourages participation and the development of mutuality across the cohort, which brings with it a sense of belonging and investment. When it occurs in the studio classroom, mutuality replaces conventional hierarchies while acknowledging that the relationship is structured around a power imbalance. The atmosphere of mutuality in a class is produced through a dynamic process of joint exchange. It is a charge that is capable of acting as an agent of change in the patterns and learning processes of the individuals and also the group. Mutuality in the classroom can be encouraged through attentiveness and also a capacity to tend to the conditions that encourage its emergence. Tending to the conditions does not expect or guarantee mutuality, but it can still orient a myriad of other processes and relations away from hierarchy, intolerance, competition and individualism. Setting the course through the learning experience by the processes of tending to the conditions for mutuality has the effect of mutuality becoming a guide for negotiating difference, conflict and navigating towards common ground. As a pedagogical approach, it aims to transform the cohort of new spatial design students into a community and it also structures the transition into the new higher level learning environment. Commoning pedagogy involves designing projects that from beginning to end facilitate the creation of an extended community. 
In a common in class, authority is not held tightly, but instead the teaching practice is also the learning process that the students are contributing to. When this unfolds in the view of the students, they can see that they're feeding back into the teaching approach, producing a bi-directional relation. A bi-directionality between the students and the teacher needs to be fostered within the classroom dynamic. When engaging students in these processes, the teacher has to shepherd the project. This occurs by contagion, from their own example and attitude, and through being attentive to the dynamics and opportunities as they appear, and by initiating processes that can continue to unfold and grow in ways that the teacher cannot necessarily control or predict. The teacher comes to the project or class with some preconditioned ideas and dispositions, bringing their pre-existing or external life and creative interests into the room, but then letting them grow in conjunction with the specific relations formed within the classroom. Commoning is intrinsically participative, as it must be entered into. Tim Ingold draws a correspondence between education and participatory creative practice. In his view, the first place to find education is not in pedagogy, but in participatory practice, not in the ways that persons and things are symbolically represented in their absence, but in the way that they are made present, and above all, answerable to one another, in the correspondence of social life. Knowledge grows along the lines of correspondence, in commoning wherein they join, and in variation wherein each comes into its own." End quote. Student engagement in participatory learning activities, usually designed or created by the teacher for the students, by the teacher for the students, is widely seen as positive. Participatory practice in the classroom brings to learning an openness to appropriation and variance. Ingold describes this approach to education as a practice of attention, where attentiveness and the attendant qualities of care are centralized, forming the bi-directional engagement with mutual learning and mutual learning processes. The teacher and the students together develop and renew implements, methods and processes that allow those whose future the design education will affect to be able to continue to influence the process of learning. I'm going to talk about these ideas through a series of projects. The first are called Continuously Under Construction and took place in Testing Grounds Art Precinct in Melbourne, Australia. Continuously Under Construction is an ongoing collaboration with the Creative Collective, These Are The Projects We Do Together, also Melbourne NGV Design Week and Testing Grounds as well as RMIT University. The project is designed so that each of the collaborators contributes different aspects to the project, but together it makes a framework that is engaging and important to the various practices in different ways. The Pyramid in 2018 was the first of these series. It was a monumental collective construction that simultaneously built community. On their first day, the students gathered at testing grounds in Melbourne, looking anxious and standing alone, most of them staring at their phones. The social and physical environment changed very quickly as they started to work. They began building, working together outside, and facilitated social contact in a way that would be difficult to instigate in a classroom on the first day of university. When the students took a break from the building, they gathered in small groups in the shade, chatting and eating watermelon, and forming temporary audiences for the unfolding event. Being the first time that we had run this event, it was astonishing for all of us to see what they had achieved, working together on their first day. As the last brick was fitted into place, a cheer broke out. All 130 students climbed on the structure for a jubilant group photograph. In 2019, the approach was motivated by inclusivity. I decided to invite all four levels of the bachelor program to start the semester together with a welcome to country. For those of you not into Australia, a welcome to country is an important ceremony led by an indigenous Aboriginal elder welcoming visitors onto their unceded and traditional lands. Starting the year this way foregrounds the necessity of making indigenous culture and knowledge foundational in spatial design education. After the welcome, the students were introduced to the project. It was a collaboration with the artist Bruno Booth. Booth uses a wheelchair and his creative work focuses on exposing the anxiety and exclusion caused by urban space for people with mobility challenges. Booth spent the whole day working alongside the students as they built the framework for his future art installation. He described his daily experiences and answered all their questions. These insights into how spatial design can foster inclusivity and acknowledge diversity is reinforced in various ways over the, years, over the year. In 2020, the focus was on sustainability. The students explored hay as a construction material and then used it to create a public amphitheatre. Queuing for lunch, they prepared 
that was prepared by the tutors, the students made friends quickly, gathering in the half-built amphitheatre to talk and eat, surrounded by the warm smell of hay. Once the amphitheatre was complete, we asked them to break into smaller groups and design and weave seating pads out of reclaimed fabrics and string, a task that further extended the concept of sustainability and also inclusivity while providing the time and space for their new friendships to develop. Each of the three continuously under construction projects used a different material, bricks, timber and hay, different construction methods and different conceptual emphasis, community, inclusivity and sustainability. All manifested commoning pedagogy as active and participatory learning and demonstrated to the students the necessity and rewards of being engaged socially and practically with the community and the industry that they were entering. In week two, the students undertook a three-day intensive off campus again at a site called SiteWorks in Brunswick. Interior design education is primarily concerned with the relations between people and the spaces they occupy, ranging from built interiors to virtual, social, digital, filmic and other experiential spaces. The scope of the discipline is an invitation to students to locate themselves in a shared world, to take a position on the existing social and spatial systems and conditions and begin to demarcate how and what they will contribute to the world, the world that we all occupy as their future as spatial designers. In week two, the students spend three full days together. The initiative is designed to promote diversity and inclusion in the student community and their approach to their design studies. A specific aim of the intensive is to build confidence in the international students and those that are working with English as a second language. For various reasons, this group comes into university reluctant to ask questions of their tutors and their local cohort or to express their views in group work. The quick experimental and skill building projects and working within different groupings encourages incremental development in confidence and capacity and initiates students into a more expansive and relational conception of interior design. This culminates in a higher level of integration and comfort across the cohort. By the third day, international and local students are well integrated and there is increased confidence in communication and participation by students from diverse backgrounds and cultures. Students transform from being hesitant and reserved to happily working in unfamiliar ways and engaging with others in randomly assigned groups. This observation is supported by feedback from many of the international students in particular in their reflective text. The creative design briefs and projects undertaken over the three days are focused on instigating creative activity rather than delivering a set of instructions or seeking a prescribed outcome. The projects are sequenced over the days to develop the students' skills, their comfort with each other and their willingness to offer up ideas and also explore processes and engage in more challenging aspects of design thinking. The many projects undertaken during the intensive require students to work in various groups. At first these are ones that they pick and then later as they become more comfortable they are organised through shared interests. Practice working in groups and building familiarity across the cohort produces a level of trust which enables the groups to generate solutions that none of them would be able to conceive alone. Trust means that nascent ideas can be shared and students gain dual abilities in playing the part of creator and also critic. Each collaborator has an audience on whom ideas can be tested, ideas which can, through feedback, become more established. It's a model that initiates students into peer-to-peer -peer learning which is then further established during the year. The first intensive included a spontaneous exhibition. This is commoning pedagogy in action. The students were enthusiastic about this event and it has been included in the schedule ever since. The exhibition draws together 130 large scale photographs and 1500 drawings and images made between week one and two, as well as hundreds of models, installations, animations and performance artifacts made over the three days. For many, this is the first time that they have organised an exhibition or presented their work publicly, and for it to occur so early in their education, in their second week of studies, at such a large scale, it is very empowering. It also provides an opportunity for students to share their experience with their friends and family, and enables them to see their work in the context of a diverse cohort who they can learn from. 
Observations about the impact of the exhibition led to initiating student-focused and student-led exhibitions over semester one and two as celebrations of achievement and also forums by which students develop confidence, self-organising and sharing their work publicly and articulating their ideas to the broader community. Another key commoning activity is the notion of hospitality and welcome. On all four days, the tutors prepare breakfast and lunch. These are events that encourage the students to stay on site, create time for conversation and develop community as they queue and then eat and then clean up together. The strategy of commoning pedagogy informs the design of the assessment, which underscores their connection and shared experience. The assessment provides opportunity for reflection and self-evaluation and a dedicated moment to articulate their aspirations for their future studies. Students are asked to review the work and documentation that they produced over the intensive and curate 10 images and write a short reflective text to describe their journey over the three, day, three days. Each student uploads their collection of images and text to a shared Instagram site an open platform where they can explore each other's work, make comments and find commonalities and also appreciate variants. The teaching and learning approaches in the first two weeks of semester inform the rest of the year and the course um, and courses and builds confidence in the students. As the relationships and attitudes of active participation in education are initiated right at the beginning, students transition quickly from to willingly engaging with peer-to-peer -peer learning and unfamiliar or challenging projects and concepts. The first two weeks produce a high level of integration across the students of all cultures and backgrounds. International students and those working in second language grow confident, asking questions of their peers and tutors when they need advice or input. This improves that group's outcomes and experiences overall. The benefits of the first two weeks of applied commoning pedagogy were emphasised this year when the students and teachers transitioned suddenly to online learning in week three. The shared experience, basic skills and established connections between peers and tutors facilitated learning and communication on the digital platforms and meant teachers could build effectively on the initial relationships and experiences of the first two weeks. Next year we will be doing a mixture of blended and online learning. We've decided that we will start again with a two week intensive where the students can work through all of these projects and trust building activities and then again move to an online system. The approaches and prompts used in this intensive develop in the student experience with combined and exploratory thinking and making, an openness to unfolding processes, an understanding of how interior design is relational practice as well as the social connections with each other at the start of their design education. Bell Hooks, the educator, explains how the classroom can be a location of possibility. She goes on, Quote, in that field of possibility, we have the opportunity to labour for freedom and to, ma to demand of ourselves and our comrades an openness of mind and heart that allows us to face reality even as we collectively imagine ways to move beyond boundaries, to transgress. End quote. A pedagogical practice that is interrelated and informed by common and creative practice provides an entrance into new territories for learning and for teaching. Hooks believes in education as the practice of freedom, and for me, commoning processes step towards that practice of freedom. Within the often conflicted and constrained terrain of tuition, commoning orients the disposition of the teacher towards being adaptive, intuitive, and alive with attentiveness. It provides resistance to the values that corporate management have brought to tertiary education, and 